Oh my gosh, did you guys see Pretty Little Liars Welcome to the Dollhouse last night? It was intense and I'm more confused than ever. What's up guys, it's Angela and I am here to talk about the Pretty Little Liars season finale, of course. But before we get into that, I do have a little bit of business to take care of. I promised you guys two giveaways and I'm gonna draw them really fast. And the rules of the giveaway are you have to be subscribed, um, you have to be 18 or have a parent's consent, which I don't think I mentioned in that video. So just if you win, make sure you have a parent's consent if you are under 18 so I can, you can tell me your address and it won't cause any funny business. So let's get going, shall we? First one is booktube. Give them a good shuffle, okay. And the booktube winner is going to be time to read. So you will win the booktube box and contact me either direct message here or on Twitter at PLLChick8811 or at Angie's Epic Reads. If I don't hear from you by Saturday, I will try and contact you and let you know you won. Um, but yes, the next one is going to be my pretty little liars. I had to make sure I had the right thing. I have two coffee cups. Okay. All right. And it is going to be PLL Star. Same thing applies. If you guys didn't win, I'm going to be doing more giveaways. So don't worry, there's always a chance for you to win. And I really want to take this moment to thank you guys so much for your support for my channel. And subscribing to my channel it really does mean a lot and I love talking to you guys and if I can't respond to your comment it's probably because your comments are turned off sometimes I don't see them I've noticed a few that I haven't noticed lately but I really do try to respond to everybody because I really do appreciate each and every one of you taking time out to comment and talk to me and let me know what's going on in book two which I haven't made a video in quite a while or pretty little liar so Thank you guys. I can't say thank you enough. Okay, so let's get into this recap, which is gonna be really short because I wanna focus on theories. So, A storms the beaches of Normandy. Okay, so really A storms the prison van that is transporting the liars to a different prison from Allison because the warden got word that they're plotting something big and they figure if we separate them, they can't do this. So A throws in a smoke bomb, which knocks the girls out and transports them to their creepy ass dollhouse where none other than Mona is waiting, playing a piano and dressed as Allie. And it's so creepy. She is basically convinced that she is Allison. I'm just like, okay, have fun with that. Mona's alive. There you go, spoiler. Ugh, I see, I already knew it because I read those damn spoilers. I'm so mad at myself. I ruined it. Okay, then we go to all the guys, aka Ezra, Caleb, and Toby. They are working together to track down the girls. And I was just sitting there, I'm like, I cannot do this right now because this is so much man candy in one room. Was anybody else's heart just going boom, 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 boom. But it was such a great scene. And I really liked that they were all working together. And then the Hastings came into the mix later on. So finally, we have people that know what's going on. And we're going to get some answers in season six. Yeah. I'm still a bit skeptical. Okay. And then the girls are back in the dollhouse, and, or we're back in the dollhouse, and the girls are saying, oh, it's so good that you're alive. We thought you were dead. And Mona, who's playing Allie, says, "I'm so. it's such a great thing that Grunwald pulled me out. Did Allie tell Mona about Grunwald that night when Mona rescued her? I don't remember that. But if she didn't, how would Mona know? Would A have told her? Does Mona know who A is? I personally think Mona knows who A is. And I don't know why she's keeping, a, you know, quiet about it. But I do think she knows who A is. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think Mona knows who A is? Or do you think, you know, she was telling the truth? And then 
the generator goes out and then they have three minutes of dark and Mona goes and gets all the girls and she says, you know, I know I'm not Allie, I'm Mona, obviously, and makes a snarky comment and Ari's like, yep, it's Mona. And she asks about her mother, but then she also looks really happy when she finds out that Allison's been convicted for her murder. I thought her plan was to come back and prevent that from happening. Now, I know she's been held captive in the dollhouse, so she really couldn't do anything about it. But why had that smirk? She just had that Mona smirk. You know, you guys know what I mean. And I'm just like, I thought you didn't want this to happen, but maybe I was wrong. And then the Hastings go to see Allison in jail, and she tells them, hey, there's a new A. It's not Mona. It's... This is the A that killed Mona and my mom. And they're obviously very reluctant to believe her. Um, Peter is probably the most reluctant. But, you know, they're like, well, what? why are you telling us the truth? And she responds with, I have nothing to lose, but you guys do, you know. So, obviously, their daughter, Ming Spencer. Back in the dollhouse, Allison... Forgot my air quotes there. <laughs> Mona is given a gas mask by A and with a note that says because you're my favorite or something along those lines and I was thinking back to when we saw the gas mask in Ravenswood. Now apparently it was two different people okay. Marlene said I believe there were two people in the gas mask. I mean which how can you believe you either know or you don't because you're the damn creator of the show so you should know but anyway. Ezra was in the gas mask, and then we had A in the gas mask. So why was Mona given the gas mask? I am so confused. If you guys have any theories about this mask, let me know down below. I know Lucas relates to this gas mask because his last name is German, and this is a German uniform that we originally saw it in. So there is that. And then the Hastings crash the boys' party. They say they know who A is and they want to help. Ezra warns them that, you know, going through all these boxes about A, A has stuff on them as well. And I just find this really ironic because Ezra is the one that was also stalking these girls for a good bit of time. Does anybody else remember this? No? Nobody? Maybe his camera is everywhere? Gee, I don't know. Andrew, alert, creeper, alert, alarm bells are going off. Melissa calls her mother, and Andrew is listening in on this phone call. He is downstairs while everybody else is upstairs in Toby's apartment. I'm not sure what's going on with Andrew. Campbell Farm came into it tonight, or last night, and played a big role. Um, and I'm assuming that's his family's property, where, you know, everybody used to go when they were little and pick apples. And where A has their new lair. So I'm not sure if he knows that A is camped out there. And A, in this instance, not saying always, but in this instance, has somebody else helping them. Or if Andrew just feels left out and wanted to creep on people. And the cops find the van at the Campbell Farms. Spencer, after their fake little prom for Charles de Laurentiis, who wanted to stage the prom from seven years ago for Melissa's prom, A Night at the Opera, which was kind of strange, but it also plays a big part in my theory. Um, Spencer gets into this vault where all these toys and pictures of little boys are with uh, Mrs. de Laurentiis. And she watches this homemade video, homemade, homemade, home movie. And it features Mrs. De Laurentiis with a baby in her arms and two little boys. Not going to say they're twins because I don't think they're twins at all. They look, don't look anything alike. And I believe if they wanted to do twins, they would have cast twins for this role. But they do look um, around the same age. But also in the little vault, there's a crib, and I'm wondering why that's there. Like, what significance does this have? So, the girls get out, and they run out to try and climb over this fence, but Spencer figures out that it is a electric fence uh, and warns them to wait, and that is where we end for the season. So, that is my really brief recap, because I really want to get into some theories without making this video super long. 
But anyway, before we get into some theories, some shout outs and clarification need to happen. So I'm going to shout out Cindy L. Marshall, if you're watching this, um, and it's Cindy L. Marshall on Twitter. And they have the best tweet for the finale. I laughed so hard. It says, Toby screaming lieutenant is like Rolf trying to find the Von Trapp family. Yes, that was the best. That made my night. And like, just his gestures and when they were at the farm and his like, I mean, he was so intense and it was so funny. I was cracking up. But that tweet made my night because among a lot of anger about, you know, we're not finding out anything. And then a lot of ass kissing. Oh, that's such a great episode. I just needed a break from it all. I did like the episode, but I am, I am mad. I mean, come on. Who the hell is Charles now? Okay. And then in an interview with Oliver Goldstick, we have found out that we have seen and heard a before. No, that's from Marlene King. I'm sorry. I will link both interviews down below. But we have seen and heard a before. That's from Miss Marlene King, which the pathological liar. You can't trust anything she says, but I'm going to start because apparently everything will be wrapped up by the end of season 6A. Like, we'll know everything. We'll know any question from season one in 10 episodes. They can best get moving. You know what I mean? Because in the second half of season six, we're going to have that four-year time jump and the girls are going to be out of college. And then we hear from Ch uh, Oliver Goldstick that it is more important to focus on that Charles is a relation to the De Laurentiis family and not a twin. Which I don't think he's a twin anyway. But I, like I said, I will link both of them below so you can read it for yourself. I personally like to read things for myself so I know how it goes. Okay. So, I tried to make that recap quick. Let us get into some theories. And mainly one big theory. And that is going to be who is Charles De Laurentiis. Now, Everybody's going on about it's Jason's twin, right? I know everybody's immediate reaction was that it's Jason's twin. Now that people are having time to process this, a lot of people are saying the boys don't look alike, and I agree they're not twins at all. But I don't think it is going to be a twin boy because I don't have proof of this one, but you guys can Google it and find it on your own, which is what I had to do. I don't remember where it was. But the actress that plays Jenna made a slip, like maybe a year or two ago, and said that somebody is going to have a twin sister, okay? And I'm pretty sure Allie, the actress that plays Allie, also said the same. So I'm not quite sure about her, but I know for sure that Jenna said somebody has a twin sister. And this is the heart of my theory, which is, are you ready? Are you guys ready for it? Mrs. De Laurentiis has a twin sister. Original, right? I know it's going around that Mary and Kavanaugh and Mrs. De Laurentiis are the twins, but I don't think so. I think Mrs. De Laurentiis and Mrs. Marin are twin sisters. If you look at the Bethany Young sketches, the one with Mrs. D and the devil horns, which I will try and link down below because you guys really need to see this picture looks like it has two different faces okay so the first one is the first side her hair is pulled back and the devil horn is coming out of her forehead the second side her hair is down and it's coming out of her hair now you could say oh this is just how bethany chose to draw her or whatnot but then you move down to the eyebrows one eyebrow is kind of wider, Mrs. De Laurentiis, and the other one is very, very thin and sculpted like Ashley Marin's eyebrows. So I think that that is the twin theory. I think Ashley and Jessica are twin sisters. And this could also explain the yellow dress because I know a lot of people are, you know, theorizing now, don't know how this dress fits into it. They don't know if Charles is transgender what role that plays in anything. But if Mr. De Laurentiis did not like Ashley for whatever reason, he might not have wanted his wife to communicate with her, which in 
my case, I say move away from the town, you dumbass. But she could have bought that dress for Hannah. I also don't believe that she was holding Allison in that video with the baby and the boys. I think that might have been Hannah. And there are two little boys. One had short hair and one had the shaggy hair. And I believe the shaggy hair was Jason. Because I think that was a clue that when we later see Jason as an adult and he has that kind of shaggy do, I think they were trying to hint at this is Jason, but the other one is not. And I think that was Hannah Marin's brother, Charles. Are you guys with me so far? It's kind of confusing. But I have narrowed down my Charles suspect to two people that I, I can only think of two people that I could possibly be on the show. And I need you guys to help me out here. What do you guys think? So looking at the baby and then looking at those children, those children look like they're between four and six years old, six at the max, and it's pushing it. I don't know kids age, so I don't know, you know, I don't have kids. I don't know what this age looks like over what this age looks like, but they looked a little bit older than two, which rules out Toby. And then we move into the next age bracket. So the little boy with Jason looked close to Jason's age. Who on the show do we have close to Jason's age? We have a few people. Um, Holbrook is two years older than Jason. So that can't be him because that little boy did not look eight years old. The one with the short hair? No, not Holbrook. We're ruling him out. Then we move on to the middle to the NAT age people like Melissa, Ren, people like that. So we have obviously um, Jason, who is now 24 years old. So if the baby was Hannah or Allie, that would make them six in the video, the boys. And who is close to that age but Ezra, Cece, and Ren. Now, I ruled out Ren because both of those boys had blue eyes. Ren has brown eyes. And Ezra and Cece both have blue eyes. So I'm kind of torn between Ezra and Cece being my top suspect um, at the moment because of this tweet that Holly Marie Combs sent out. It was like, what is Ezra's middle name again? <sighs> These people are driving me nuts. But... All this information really points to CC being Charles. CC Drake equals Charles De Laurentiis. CD equals CD. And her being transgendered. We got a little information from Marlene today that said um, the song Unwritten that was playing at the prom, at the fake prom, was a very specific clue. So let's go back and look at it. It says in the very beginning, the first line is, I am unwritten. I'm unwritten. I'm unwritten. Can't read my mind. I'm undefined. Could this possibly be transgendered? Um, you're not defined as a man or a woman. The next one says, we've been conditioned to not make mistakes, but I can't live that way. So I immediately thought of the De Laurentiis family and... You know, how they try and appear on the outside. This doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a brother. It could just be a cousin, which it would be if they were, if Ashley and um, Jessica are proven sisters. So let's see what else I have. I really don't know how... Um, Bethany plays into all this maybe because Cece was going to Radley around the time that Marion was in there dressed as Allison, you know, saying I wanted to be committed and Mrs. De Laurentiis gets the call and she finds out that it's Cece and Cece has told Bethany all of this information because we also find out that when Mona was at Radley, Cece was going to visit her through a pass given by Wren. 
She said that it was because Allison bullied her as well, and she wanted to mentor Mona. But remember when Mona had the Queen of Hearts card in her hand? I find this very interesting because I think, I personally think that Mona knows who Ubre is and is keeping quiet for some odd reason. I don't know why, but I just don't believe the spiel that she's saying she doesn't know who stole the game from her. I think she does. Just like I don't believe, you know, Ezra is just a writer. I think he knows more than he is letting on. I don't know why I'm waving my pen. Um, but yes, the Queen of Hearts card could refer to who visited her in Radley, a.k.a. C.C. Drake. And it also is a, a reference to Charles De Laurentiis. Because if you guys didn't know, Lewis Carroll wrote um, Alice in Wonderland and his actual name was Charles. So, Uber A was definitely in Radley, not a minion. This is what I take away from it. And they were giving Mona orders. I don't know if Mona remembers or not. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. I also want to know why Mona would have a French room. All decked out in French, like French things. Dolls, you know, French music, French books. This is confusing to me because the only other reference we have of France is that's where Cece went when she had to flee for killing Wilden. Supposedly, she went to France. Did anybody else go to France? And I want to know if Mona put the things in the mirror, the anagrams in her mirror, or did A do that? Because if she did it, it would stand to reason that Mona would know about a, at least the name Charles de Laurentiis, but she continually, continually calls um, A an it in the dollhouse. And then uh, eventually she starts calling it a he. So, this is really confusing, and this is just a really tentative theory that I have been working on today. But from based on what we know and the earlier video that I did with the tweets decoded, we've seen A in a black hoodie. And what I mentioned earlier about it being Cece or Ezra, Ezra's never been in a black hoodie. He's been in the baseball cap. So Cece has been in a black hoodie and this could very easily be Cece. In fact, I think this proves that it could only be Cece because that is the only way these ages match up. You guys, like, look at the video again and then put down everybody's age on a piece of paper, okay? And, like, or just who you think the baby is. And see for yourself. I mean, this is nuts that I, I think that they basically told us who A is. And a lot of people are overlooking it. And I personally think it's Cece Drake. I have not finished watching seasons three through five yet so I'm going to continue watching it on break and work on my theory for who A is it might change guys I might totally come back and be like oh Caleb's A oh who gives a crap about those babies in that video Caleb's A Caleb's A 100% you know what I mean I'm trying not to get tunnel vision to CC but this is my strongest theory for who it could be but here is where it throws me off because with Ezra it threw me off with him never being in the black hoodie now we know Marlene is a liar and we can't take her at her word but I don't think she would lie about A ever like A being in a black hoodie I don't know she might but here's what throws me off about CC being A if A were transgender and was born a boy and wanted to transition into a girl, why would they be in the dollhouse as a man? Why not be in there as a woman? I'm not sure about this. Um, maybe it's symbolizing their lost childhood when their parent, you know, when their parents didn't accept them, weren't understanding of them. But what do you guys think? They wanted to be a girl if they are transgender. They wanted to be a girl more than anything in the world, and yet they're in there as a man, and they have photos of the boys, and it's just really confusing to me. 
And the person was tall, the man in the dollhouse. So it could, you know, it could be Cece or it could be Ezra. They're both tall. But we're not counting out everybody yet because I know there are so many more theories coming in right now. So I want to throw this one last idea out to you guys and then we will end it and hopefully have a great discussion down below. I know this video is kind of long. I'm sorry. When they were in the dollhouse and Tanner discovered it, okay, was it on a loop or was it real time? Because she saw when they were in the game room. If that was real time, that didn't necessarily mean that A was always watching them. We saw, we saw the cameras move when Mona was in bed sleeping and when they had the fight in the prom room, I guess you could call it. Um, the camera moved, signifying that A was watching. We didn't see the camera move in the game room at all. So that very well could have been real time and then A could have come for the prom. So A could be anybody. A could be Toby, which is driving me nuts because why do they keep showing A's shoes and then Toby comes down the stairs and it makes this huge emphasis on his shoes. This is driving me insane, you guys. I just cannot do it anymore. Um, but I don't think Toby was a boy in that video. I could be totally wrong, and Toby could very well be the second boy, but the boys look too close in age, number one. And number two, neither of them look two years old to me. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below. I would really appreciate if you leave comments because I love talking to every one of you. So if you want to reply back from me, make sure your comments are turned on. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And look out for some theory videos. I might talk about some of your theories um, during our break. I just really want to continue my Pretty Little Liars videos and finish seasons three through five. And I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to say, but I really can't remember it because this video is going on forever. It's going on forever. I think that's it, actually. So, yeah. Thank you, guys, if you're still watching this super long video. I'm trying to look at my notes. I had off. And that was my annoying bird clock. And I filled up like a couple pages in my notebook on my theory. Anytime it wants to get done. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I really want to know your reaction to the finale. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. I know I said I would film my reaction um, while I was watching it. I ruined it for myself because I could not watch it while it was airing and I was on Twitter the entire time reading what was going on and I did film my myself watching it but the video was so boring because I was just like oh, okay okay it wasn't really shocking to me because I knew what was going on so I'm not gonna post it because it's just super boring but anyway that's it for me and I will see you guys next time bye